Page 71. Waterfall Creek. This will be our talk-through of the piece, and then the full playthrough will be on the next track. So, I'll be reading you the particular trouble spots to watch out for. So, we're going to start by jumping to measure 5 and 6. This area features a new picking pattern, often found in classical banjo. This was uh, popular between 1880 and 1930. It still exists today, but uh, its popularity was much bigger in those years. Anyway, <laughs> regarding that aside, the pattern begins on the fifth note of measure five. So that would be to say, measure five starts off with a high E minor chord, looks like an A minor shape at frets eight and nine. So while holding down that chord, string-wise, if you look at the tablature in measure five, you're picking first string, third string, second string, first string. The next chord in measure five is a bar D chord at seventh fret. That will begin by picking the first string with the index finger, and then third, second, first with thumb, index, middle. In measure six, you move down to a C bar five chord. That is again, starting with the index picking the first string, then three strings in a row, thumb, index, middle. One more, B minor, you pick the first string with your index, and then three strings in a row, thumb, index, middle. And once you get to measure seven, picking resumes to normal picking hand function. So, let me play through those two measures, measure five and six. And uh, if you're playing along, really watch your fingering there, because this kind of bringing the index to the first string makes this maneuver nice and smooth. Here we go, measure five and six. One and two and three and four and. Index. Index here. Index. And that's the first note of measure seven. Let me do it a little quicker so you can get a feel for the smoothness of the operation. Measure five and six again. One and two and three and four and. Our next trouble spot would be measures 14 through 16. That's the on the second line of the B part. And um, what you need to watch out for in measures 14 through 16 is the fretting hand fingerings. So let's run over that. I'm going to start measure 14. I'll give a little count if you want to try playing along or follow with your eye. One and two and three and Measure 14. Index. Middle. Bar with ring. Pinky. Form a C chord. Add your ring finger there. Then middle goes down to second string fifth fret. Index on third string fifth fret open first string, then pinky grabs the first string 12th fret. You fret the fifth string with your thumb at 10, and then index at first string nine, middle at second string 10, open fifth, jump down to first string fourth fret with your index finger. Woohoo! 
That's a series of fingerings that could make your life quite complicated. Okay, let me play the entire line from Measure 13. I won't say anything, but really concentrate on those fretting hand fingerings. Measure 13 now, to the end of the line. One, and two, and three, and four, and. Now I'm on measure 18, the second measure of the C part of this song. And measure 18 is a descending scale passage from high D on first string down to low E on the fourth string. Let me play that whole measure for you with a count off. Watch your picking hand fingerings this time. One and two and measure 18, four and. That was just picked with my index finger, that fourth string second fret. So the rest gives you time to regroup and regroup you must for a measure 19. The second note of measure 19 requires your picking hand, middle finger, right there, to come inside to the second string. And then your index will pick the third string, fifth fret, thumb picks the fourth string, seventh fret. And then from that point, picking goes back to normal. So now, I'll play you from measure 17 all the way to the end of that line. Measure 17. One, and two, and three, and four, and. Now look at measure 23, or the third measure in on the last line. There's one picking anomaly there, and I'll start measure 23. Starts with two open strings, three and two. 23. One, and two, and three, and four, and. Right there, thumb picks the open second string. From there, things turn back to normal. Let me count that measure one more time. One, and two, and three, and four, and. That brings me one note from the very last note, which we'll have to talk about that as well. So the very last note of the piece says fifth string, 17th fret. We've already been fretting the string at the 10th fret from time to time and the 12th fret from time to time. 17th fret, it has never happened yet. The harmonic which is H-A-R-M, abbreviated, is at the 17th fret. Sounds like so. 
Now that is actually only played the very last time as sort of a, they call that in a march, the stinger, that final note. So normally you would play the final measure of Waterfall Creek as follows. And then you rest, then you come back to letter C. But coming into the second time of letter C, you punctuate the song or add that stinger harmonic at the 17th fret. And the way you get harmonics is to place your finger at the 17th fret itself. That is to say, you're no longer between those fret wires like you would normally fret that note. You are on top of the fret wire, and that is the fret wire to the right side of the dot at your 17th fret. And you just barely touch it. You can also slightly lift off the string as you pick it to get that high, high G note, harmonic chime. There are, of course, other places you can get strong harmonics, probably stronger than that one. So uh, that wasn't a, the best place in the world to start you on harmonics. So let me go to the 12th fret. And when I'm talking about the 12th fret, I'm talking about the 12th fret wire itself not between the frets. If you try touching those strings between the frets, you get a little bit, but when you touch the string at above the fret wire itself, you get nice chimes. Even the fifth string has a way up high something or other. <laughs> Hardly ever used, but uh, that's fine. So there's your harmonics at the 12th fret from first string on down. First, second, third, fourth, fifth. Then you have strong harmonics also at the 7th fret. Again, I'm at the fret wire to the right of the 7th fret. Fifth string really makes no noise there, so it's really just first, second, third, and fourth. And then if you want a real challenge, go to your fifth fret, and you get, you get some really high harmonics, a full octave above your uh, high G right there. Actually, it's the same pitch as your high G at the first string 17th fret, third string 5th fret harmonic. First, second, third, fourth. They're, they're nice when you, um, you do a pluck on three strings at the 12th fret. Just holding that finger slightly over the 12th fret. And then 7th fret. And the 5th fret. That's the hardest one to get. If you want uh, to listen to more harmonic type of playing, find a version of Bugle Call Rag. You'll probably really enjoy that one if you haven't heard it before. Anyway, we're just using that one little harmonic chime at 5th string, 17th fret, one time in the whole piece. So having gone through all that, on the next track, I'll play a slow version of Waterfall Creek. <laughs> 